Welcome to the West Cooking Show, everyone. I'm your host, Jace, Chef Jason Hugave, Steamboat Warehouse, Washington, Louisiana. And I'm Krista Landry here from Steamboat as well. Today we have two local events coming up, um, and we're going to be cooking a catfish dish um, to kind of promote that. So y'all join us back for What's Cooking. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, everyone. Uh, we are here talking about some uh, festivals uh, nearby, and we'll be cooking you a great catfish dish that we've been running here for the last two weeks of Lent. Mm -hmm. uh, tell them a little bit about the, 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 the main event that we're looking forward to. So here in Washington, um, Saturday, March 25th, we are gonna have our second annual um, Washington Community Festival. Um, we have great, events for it. We have a car show, we have vendor booths, food, um, they're going to be serving food, drinks. We also have a catfish cook-off. Um, we're real excited about That's why we're kind of... Live music. Yes, that's <clears throat> why we're kind of doing the catfish today. Live music. So from 10 a.m. to noon, we're going to have Chubby Carrier. 1 to 3, we're going to have Mr. Don Fontenot. Mr. Don. Yep. 4 to 6, Shotgun Lily. And 7 to 9, Travis Mott. Um, last year was our first year having it back here in town and it was such a big hit. Everyone was so excited. So um, I'll elaborate a little bit on that. So what some people don't realize is this uh, festival, which was always called the Catfish Festival, mm -hmm. was actually downtown for so many years and the whole town came and everybody was involved, the whole town. And years ago it was moved to uh, the camp, where the campground is now in Washington. Mm -hmm. Ponderosa. And, and it drew a crowd, but it was mostly uh, people from Texas and Houston and not necessarily the townspeople anymore. Right. So last year was the, as you say, second annual. It's, it's far from the second annual. So last year was the first year we actually brought it all back to downtown and it was probably bigger than it ever was before. Mm -hmm. And there's vendors all down Main Street you know, kid, people of all ages, kids, adults, and there's something for everybody, and a little friendly uh, cook-off competition to go with it, Yeah. which is always catfish. Um, so today, we're gonna do a catfish dish. And this is gonna be a very simple uh, dish, it, but the reason why we chose this dish is because this is some spotted cat. This is not blue cat, this is not yellow cat. It's just a different species of catfish, right. but it's so clean, mild. It doesn't have, uh, typically catfish can have sort of a muddy off flavor. And this fish is, is nothing like that. And we have done this, rest, this dish for, well actually the fish in a different way. Uh, we served it grilled with jumbo lump crab meat on top, and it was a really big hit. We've had some people say it's the best dish they ever ate over here, which is kind of mind-blowing because it's catfish. Right. But it works. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this catfish. So this, for this dish, you need any kind of fish fry you would like to use at home. Uh, today we bought Louisiana. And, we, of course, you need this catfish, which can be found at Sebastian's. Seafood Market, right. which is the Old West End Seafood in Opelousas, yeah. next to Mesh's Supermarket. Yeah. Um, we're going to have some steamboat seasoning to go on that, and we have a couple of lemons to uh, serve alongside of it when it's done. And I like to put a little mustard, and I know a lot of people do too, mm -hmm. so uh, we're going to throw that down together. So take my fish fry, and I want to dump this one in here. We got three of these little packs with a pound or 10 ounce, okay. So if you can see this fish, how just how pretty it is. I'm gonna cut it into some little, little strips. So while Jason is doing that, I wanna say all of these ingredients, um, maybe not spotted cat, but you can find um, catfish at your local Piggly Wiggly. Oh yeah. Cash saver. Um, 8410 Highway 182 North and 1305 Heather Drive. Go by and see them. Um, the tell them we sent you. Yes. Uh, actually, I went there yesterday. Poor Joey. I used to go to Joey's store <laughs> just to just to go mess with him. Uh, 
but I had to go yesterday to get some some ingredients for peach cobbler, which we had a big big party last night over here uh, for the Louisiana Land Bank. But I want to mention while we're seasoning this up, this steamboat season you can use very liberally because it's not too salty and it's also not too spicy. So I like to use this and if, if I feel I need to add a little more salt, I can add it. Um, or if, spice. If you want, if, you know, some people out there, like Joey always did, gotta be more spice. You can add spice to it, but some of these all-purpose seasonings, you, you gotta be careful how much you season it because it's too much salt or- Too much know, of something, yeah. right? So we're gonna throw our, our little catfish in there. Just kind of get them evenly coated. This fish, you can serve so many different ways. Um, and it sells, it sells really well. I've grilled it. Um, actually, a couple of times I actually pan fried it, real lightly coated, and it was excellent. So, all right, let's check our grease, make sure we're good. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. You good. So we're gonna drop them in. This little electric fryer, man, it took us a little, uh, a little while <laughs> to uh, figure it out because first time we used it, it was on the show. And I, I set the thermostat to 350. And when we dropped our, our, uh, our, our ingredients in there, it was just not hot. And so what I did was read the directions, which is probably what I should have done on the get-go. And it said, <laughs> crank it all the way to 400 or it won't fry. Mm -hmm. So, learned a lesson. <clears throat> so, we're just gonna let this fry up real nice. And we're gonna serve it today with our house-made tartar sauce that we make here um, two, three times a week. And <clears throat> the romalot sauce is an accompaniment, accompaniment for a very special uh, surprise at the end of the show, yeah. or towards the end. <laughs> and uh, you, you wanna stay tuned for this one, because yes. um, it's gonna be pretty fun. I, I enjoy it. Um, I enjoy it. Yeah, you just, it's <laughs> one of those things you have to remove the image out of your mind of where it comes from, and just be a soldier and try it. Oh my God. <clears throat> Matter of fact, first time I got some and put it on the menu, Every employee in here on Friday night tried it. All the women, all the men. Yep. And all of them said, man, it's really delicious. Yep. There's only two of the ladies that said, it's good, but um, I don't know if I, I get this image in my head. So, uh, <laughs> but they all said it was good. It was good. It's one of those dishes that you just gotta say, look, just expand your mind, be open-minded and try it. And um, we'll- Just do it. We'll tell you more about that and in, in the end of the show. So uh, <laughs> stay tuned for more What's Cooking. <laughs> Welcome back to the What's Cooking show, everyone. We have our fish that's uh, been frying on off camera. So it's about ready to, uh, to take them out. And you don't want them too dark, but you also want them crispy. So I like to let them go just a little a little longer than normal. So, all right, take that out. Now I wanna show y'all what it looks on the inside. Just beautiful, clean, crispy, white, flaky. Just catch that. Now, so, <clears throat> on to the next dish. This is our catfish dish. I wish y'all could all try this at home because it's just a clean flavor. But go visit them at Sebastian's. Tell them we yeah, sent go, you go get, and they'll hook you up with some. And I'll be honest with you, all you gotta do is walk in and ask for Miss Sharon or Carrie and just tell them you want some spotted cat fillets and they will fillet it right there in right front there. of you. Right there, so fresh. Everything boom. over there is so fresh. They, everything, we, got, we get scallops from there. They have live crabs certain times of year, but they have crabs, yeah. they have gumbo crabs, they have shrimp, frog legs, Turtle meat, if you want turtle meat for a sauce pecan oh, or anything, gosh. And it's she's good probably too. the only place you're gonna find it. Yeah. 
Now, one thing you will not get at Sebastian's All right. seafood. Here it goes. <coughs> Drum roll. Is <laughs> uh, these beautiful rocky mountain oysters. So, as you see these right here, these have already been prepared. And yes, it is bull testicles, but it's delicious. It's like the chicken nugget of beef. Okay, okay I've never yes. um, heard it. I'll, so, okay. this is what you get. I get these from Mr. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Radasta, Fred Radasta. Um, he has his veterinarian go and they'll castrate 30, 40 calves at a time. And he just lets me have them. So, you want to take your knife, and there's two membranes you want to go through. This feels tough at first, but once you get to that membrane, then you flip it. And so what you do here is you put your thumb underneath and separate it from the membrane. And it's easier said than done, but just run your thumb all the way through it. That way it comes off and doesn't rip. It'll come off in one piece, mm -hmm. as you see. Same with this one. Just run your thumb underneath. Very simple. We've had so, uh, when he said he was going to put this on the menu, I was like, are you crazy? <laughs> that is not going to sell. No one's going to buy that. They I actually think thought I was we're crazy nuts. Too. But like it was so many things ran through my brain and we sold out and people are asking, please, like when are we do haven't this had again? this in forever. It brings back memories of my childhood, all kind of stuff. <laughs> and please put it back on the menu. So we're like, okay, maybe he's not crazy. So <laughs> I actually did not think it would really sell that well, but we sold out. And like she said, I go to Ardoin's grocery next door. Yes. And all of them were like, man, I missed them. Now, you, how many people said, man, I grew up on those? Uh -huh. um, I was actually uh, fishing in my pond down the road with a buddy who said, man, if you ever get some more, please let me know. I was raised on them <laughs> chicken nuggets. I said, okay. So is that where you got that from? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to put our little fish right here. I'm going to put, just for garnish because you got to have some lemon on there I like to squeeze it oh, yeah. right on top of my fish but it just makes it pop that that's lemon. it and like I said if you don't want it this dark you don't have to fry it as long as me but I like it crunchy yes so there you have our first dish spotted cat <clears throat> mm -hmm. now what I like to do is take these and cut them in half. There's recipes online where they fry them whole, and that's fine. Um, I just think a, a bite-sized piece is, is, is plenty enough. So just carefully. It's, they're very, very tender. It's kind of like sweet breads. I guess I would, you know, compare it to. But again, this is another item that I like. You have to eat it crispy. Yeah. The first time I ate it, uh, I'm not going to say who, but it was not prepared correctly. And all the batter was falling off. And it, it wasn't very enjoyable. But when I got these my first time, and I got them to the restaurant, I fried them coated them very well, threw them in some hot grease, and they just came out, if they're crispy, like a potato chip. So most of the ingredients we are using here, of course not these Rocky Mountain oysters, can be found at your local Piggly Wiggly or Cash Saver, 8410 Highway 182 North and 1305 Heather Drive. Go by and see them. Ask them for the fish, ask them, they have tartar sauce, they have lemon, they have everything. You might surprise them and ask them for that, but. They do. So let's go ahead and uh, take a quick break. When we come back, we'll batter these up and then we will uh, 
show you how to finish it up. All right, y'all join us back for more What's Cooking. Welcome back, everybody, to the What's Cooking show. Um, we have our catfish here, and then we have our little surprise that Jason prepared for y'all. So he's going to tell us the next step in preparing these. Okay, so once you have them cleaned and seasoned, this is what they look like. So we're going to put these into our egg wash. Our egg wash is uh, eggs. These are farm fresh eggs we used, some buttermilk, and a little whole milk just to kind of thin it out a little bit. So yeah. same fish fry that he used um, this, for the catfish. This you could you, use flour. Right. You could use fish fry. You could use chicken fry. Um, it just depends on what I have Whatever on hand or what I yeah. prefer doing the day of. There's no right or wrong, obviously. Really, however you like your batter. Some people like more crunchy. I think you get that more crunchier. Yeah. Feel from the fish fry. This fish fry has more like cornmeal, cornmeal in it. It gives you that crisp. And you know, I know people who don't like a crispy fish fry because if it's too much cornmeal, they find it too gritty and they don't like it. Right. Another, you know, to say it again, use what you like. Yep. White, straight white flour, straight corn flour would work. Mm -hmm. Any kind of chicken fry. Yep. All right. Let's put this little, these little babies in here. Nuggets. Chicken nuggets coming right <laughs> up. We'll have to get Matt to try some before he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Matt's just smiling like, mm, not too sure, bro. I was the same way. First time I tried it, somebody was frying him. I said, uh, I don't know. Yep. Not too sure about it, and then I said, I gotta have open mind and. Well, I put my foot in my mouth because I was like, I'll always try anything once. And then he brought these back, and I'm like, uh, but I did. I tried them, and I do like them. So. They are delicious. So while that's frying up, um, let me touch again real quick on the Washington Community Festival. Saturday, March 25th. Um, like I said, we have tons of fun activities. It's kid friendly, live music, um, car shows. I think that's probably one of our favorite things. Yes. Um, you might see my Bronco over there. Yes, it's finally done. Um, we do have another event um, coming up in Eunice. It's the 36th annual, let me make sure I'm saying that right. Yes, World Championship A2 Fay Festival. They're going to have a cook off as well. Same thing as the community festival, some fun things to do. Um, and we will have a guest next week, um, Drake Aguilar. He's going to be coming, cooking, promoting the festival. So y'all tune will in for that. That will air next Wednesday. Yes. So stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. And um, so if you want to enter, um, enter um, into the catfish cook off. Go. Cool. <laughs> Little Looking nuggets. Good. Um, we're still accepting vendors. We're accepting participants to cook. Um, uh, contact the uh, Washington Town Hall if you want to enter or if you want any other information. Mm -hmm. That's uh, where they're trying to get everybody to go do their entries. Right. Uh, we prefer that um, everyone enters beforehand. Before the of. So if you can do that, that'd be great. It makes for a more organized uh, morning. Right. But we do have registration available the day of the festival. Um. Now, so as you can see, they look similar to chicken nuggets, but you can also, <laughs> you can also say they look almost like an oyster. Yeah. <clears throat> so, I'll tell you how they taste. They're hot. Well, yeah. Eat one, so everybody knows you. I will. Not lying. Okay. Well, I don't want to burn my mouth. It's good. <clears throat> you know what else? This would be good in. They make that Oak Grove That's spicy good. chicken fry. And that. What you fried them in last time? Fish fry? 
Yeah, not this fish fry. Because this one. is, I think these are better. But They're okay, good. so be, be careful when you're buying um, fish fries that are already prepared ahead of time. Because if, if, you, if you put too much seasoning, in it, it may be salty. Right. Which I, I, I probably shouldn't have put that much of this. Because you, you know, they always say it's always a seasoned fish fry. So right. maybe, maybe try something next time or whatever. So, um, but it's delicious. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and plate. I'm gonna put our little sauce that we're gonna, oops. Our dipping sauce for this dish is going to be our house-made romalade sauce, mm -hmm. which is very similar to a New Orleans style romalade. Our only difference is we don't put, um, we don't put horseradish in it. Uh, every now and then we'll do a, a, a special with a different sauce and we'll put a little horseradish in the romalade, which I like mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, but today this one, does, this is the one we serve with our side saddle angels, our crab cakes and all that stuff. Oh, so. we serve it as a salad dressing. Some people come and get it, and yeah. put it on their salad. It's very good, so. Or they ask for that Black Forest Tenders, oh, which yeah. is not, uh, yes. it doesn't go with, so. Um, <laughs> so, okay, um, live music will be uh, 10 a.m. Chubby Carrier, which is um, a big name. Yeah. We actually have a signed, um, framed picture of Chubby Carrier in the restaurant. We sure do. I don't know where that came from. Um, I think Mr. Frankie got that, but he wow. will be there. I think he's one. Well, let me not say that because I don't know for sure, but <laughs> Don Fontenot, one of three, that's um, Dustin, our employee, that's yep. his father. Yes. And uh, he plays around all the local festivals and he has a nice old school Cajun band. And a good I following. Say they, they speak in, they sing in French, right? I think. I think sometimes they do. Shotgun Lily from four to six. Everybody knows Shotgun Lily. It's a good band from the area. Travis Smart is another big name. That's seven to nine. So you basically have from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. You almost have 12 hours of live like, music. And if you can't find something to do in them 12 hours or 11 hours, then maybe it's. Not hey, for and you can always come see us in between. We'll be open. You know, we open at five. So right. You get so bored, you got time to eat hungry, dinner and go back. And come you meet wanna, us. You know, get some AC. Take your load off your feet, you can do that and right. come check us out. But uh, next, no, 25th. Yes, okay, Saturday, so. March 25th. And then the Eunice Festival is the day after on Sunday, so. Do a good deal. So y'all yep. try to check one of those events out. We'll have more information on the Eunice Festival next week. Next week with Drake. Until then, stay tuned for more What's Cooking.